So a few months ago, I tried out my favorite pens of the summer of 2022. Uh, it was a new style of video and uh, y'all seemed to respond pretty well to it. So I thought I would try it again because three months have gone by and uh, we've launched a lot more pens. So we've done at least 40 different pens since the last video, uh, probably closer to 60 when you consider all the variants of them. So it was tough to narrow it down, but I think I've come up with my list. I did look at some sales data. I, you know, looked at some reviews and largely I just, you know, looked at that for guidance, but kind of came up with which ones I thought uh, were my favorite as well as maybe some of yours. So totally subjective list and not in any particular order, but I am kind of saving my favorite for the end. So you want to stay through and watch till there. But well, without further ado, here are some of my favorite pens of what we've launched in the fall of 2022. Our first one we've got is the Sailor 1911S Shikiori Minori. So this is the fifth anniversary of the Shikiori series of pens. So this is the 1911S. It's Sailor's smallest version of their 1911 pen that they have. It's got the 14 karat nib, great writing pen, and uh, they really did some interesting things uh, with the color on this one, uh, but it's a very attractive pen. So it's got a clear cap with some glitter happening in there, some gold glitter, all gold trim, and then it's got a fairly translucent blue body with a green grip. So they went with a very much of a multicolor, multi kind of translucent pen. Very interesting look. You don't see a lot of pens like this. So I see why it grabs a lot of people's attention. Uh, honestly, I could have put like 20 sailors on this list because they've been just coming out with them like crazy. Uh, but this one in particular stood out. And uh, so I put it first on the list. All right, next up, we've got the Pilot Vanishing Point in their annual limited edition. This one was called Coral. Every year Pilot comes out with one of these. They number it based on whatever the year is. So this year they made 2,022 of them. And, you know, I gotta admit red pens are not usually my favorite, but I think they did a pretty good job with this one. Kind of harkens back a little bit to the um, Crimson Sunrise that they did before. It was like an ombre kind of a color. This one was not an ombre, but this one was uh, a nice red, almost leaned a little bit pink, a little bit orange. Not exactly sure how to say what color this is, um, but it's got some shimmer in it too. It just re looks really nice. It was not anything crazy, but uh, a really nice looking pen. So, you know, I'm I'm one of those kind of like unintentional collectors with these Violet Vanishing Points. I'm pretty much gonna get for my own personal collection, whatever annual Vanishing Point that they're gonna come out with. While this one wasn't the most popular one we've had in the past, I still think it was a really attractive red, really attractive color. They do a nice packaging that kind of comes with it too. Uh, and so, you know, this was, this was definitely on my list. Next up on the list, we have one from Banu. Actually, technically this, this is three pens and I'm totally biased on this one because this was an exclusive that we developed with Banu. This was the Euphoria drink collection. So the number one pen out of the three that we did with them was the iced caramel latte. That one was by far the standout. We actually sold out of all of those and we've got them on reorder as of the shooting of this video. Uh, the other ones that we had were uh, rainbow slushy and then we had cookies and cream. We really debated about doing the cookies and cream because we weren't sure how popular it was gonna be. And while it's not like the clear front runner, like the ice caramel latte, um, a lot of people really, really liked it. And once we saw um, when they made the sample for us, we were like, oh my gosh, this is so spot on for what <laughs> looks like a cookies and cream. It looks like a, you know, like an Oreo, uh, like milkshake. That's almost exactly what it looks like. And we were like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. But has been great to work with. They've been through a lot this year, moving their whole company to Armenia and resetting everything up. So this was our first exclusive we got to do with them post move and to be able to support them. And they were just great to work with coming up with these really cool, really fun uh, ideas. Uh, it meant a lot to us to be able to do it. And I think the pens turned out pretty awesome. So this one was obvious <laughs> favorite of mine in the fall. Next up, this is gonna be kind of a two for one. I guess I sort of just had a three for one with the new ones, but Whatever, I like to make rules and then break them, but this is my own video anyway, so I can do whatever I want, I guess. <laughs> You're just along for the ride, so thanks for hanging in there with me. But anyway, I got two Twisbees for you. Uh, I got a Twisby, this is a um, Cerulean Blue, the Eco. And of course, I love all things blue. This blue really nailed it, like perfect cerulean color. It looks really attractive. I thought, you know, at first, you know, it's like a flat color. It's not translucent or anything. If it's the wrong shade of blue, then it could end up just looking like a, you know, cheap plastic or something like that. But I really don't think it ended up looking like it. I thought, I thought it looks really, really good. The color is just 
so spot on. It's very pleasing to the eye. I'm a big fan of the Eco anyway. It's such a practical, such an affordable pen, very user serviceable. You can take it apart and play with it. So uh, I think they really nailed it with this one and it was a, a pretty popular uh, color. And then the other one that they came out with in the same period uh, was a glow purple. So they had done a glow green previously, uh, which was also still pretty popular, but that didn't, it wasn't released in during this period. So I didn't put that one on the list, but the glow purple was also pretty popular. So um, it's always pretty cool. I mean, in practicality, do you really need a glow in the dark pen? No, it's a novelty. You're not like, you know, writing in the dark and the pen's gonna glow and allow you to write. It's not like that at all. It's really, it's really a novelty. But the pen, the, per the glow purple, it's an attractive looking purple to begin with, but then when it glows, it, it, you just don't have a lot of things that glow in that color. So I thought it looked really good. Big fan of the Eco again. Uh, so this one was pretty obvious to include. And I kind of just, you know, lumped both these colors together, but really they both kind of stand on their own as a uh, favorite picks of mine. Now, before I get to my number one pick, I have some honorable mentions I wanted to include. I always kind of joke with Drew because he's like, just pick like three pens, Brian. And the last video I did, I ended up with nine. And this one I was like, okay, I'm going to pick three, <laughs> probably end up with like, five or six, and then it'll probably grow to nine. And I think I pretty much ended up with exactly nine. So here we are. Uh, some honorable mentions though. Um, we had a pen that we did a couple of years ago in a fountain pen version with Retro 51, which was the Santa Jaws. It's kind of an ugly sweater themed pen, a special one that we got to do as an exclusive. We did a rollerball version of that one and uh, for this holiday season. So means a lot to me. I love that sweater, love that design. And to do that pen again was pretty cool. So that one I kind of give an honorable mention to. Uh, another one that this is not really a big seller because it's a Sailor Bespoke pen. So it's really just something that I think is beautiful and I really enjoy. So I just wanted to kind of highlight it a little bit. It's been really cool to have some of these Sailor Bespoke pens. For a while, they really didn't have a lot of bespokes. And now it seems like they're getting back on track and they have all kinds of great ones. Um, specifically, this is the Sailor Bespoke Eero Miyabi. Uh, in particular, the Konrui and the Ron Pecky colors. They look phenomenal. These are ebonite pens with Yurushi lacquer on them. The Yurushi techniques they use for these bespoke pens are seeing things that you just don't see every day. And you really get to see kind of the artisanal quality of how they do these lacquers. They're beautiful pens. And um, I think they're just stunning to look at, even if you don't add them to your collection. Um, it's really cool to see what they are capable of making and the artistry and, uh, and stuff like that. And our photographers are great, so they take good pictures of it. So I wanted to highlight those a little bit. And then kind of along the same lines, the Namiki Emperor Elephant. So this is a special pen, limited edition, 99 pens that they have. Extremely expensive, 15 grand for this pen, which is pretty amazing <laughs> in and of itself, but it's really a piece of art. Um, I've never seen colors this vibrant on an Urushi lacquered pen. So uh, the elephant design, the 3D texture, the, just the different techniques they have, the whole pen is just covered with these Machia and it, and it looks unbelievable. Huge canvas uh, for this design and it looks really, really phenomenal. I don't particularly have like a special affinity for elephants, uh, but I think just the artistry of this one is phenomenal and it's just a beautiful pen to look at. And then the last one I want to mention, this is totally on the other end of the spectrum, but we have a new pen from Jinhao, the X159. It was hard for me to throw this one in here because like literally we just launched this one. So I don't really have a lot of like feedback about how people are liking it. I just got it in my own hands, but I think it's a pretty interesting pen because it has a number eight size nib, a very large steel nib. And we just don't have a lot of pens that have a nib that large. Um, it doesn't write any different or really that crazy, but I like the direction that Jinhao went with this and going with a plastic body instead of a metal one. And uh, so it's just much lighter. It's still a big pen, so it's very comfortable to write with and that huge nib, uh, and it's very affordable. So I really dig that and thought it was worth uh, featuring as well. And we've now reached the countdown to my favorite here. My favorite one that we've had in the last three months has been, very biasedly, the Sailor Pro Gear Stealth Purple. Now, technically it was Pro Gear and a Pro Gear Slim. Uh, this was an exclusive that we got to do with Sailor to follow up our Stealth Green that we originally came out with. Stealth Purple, you know, to do it in the Pro Gear is really cool. Uh, and um, we liked the theme of this, you know, that dark purple in the body with the smoky kind of translucent grip and finial. Uh, just looks really good. And uh, for us to be able to do exclusives like this is a huge honor with Sailor. And uh, y'all responded really well with these pens. Uh, and so uh, clear favorite of mine, especially because 
you know, we had a very heavy hand in actually bringing this thing to lights. That one is, is gonna be my favorite personally, but I, I think it was also a, kind of a fan favorite as well. So that's my whole list for what we've had in the last quarter. Again, there are so many other great pens. So if you haven't seen a lot of these or you wanted to check them out, be sure to go to gouletpens.com, look at our new arrivals. And just in case you'd like to get these kind of like current up-to-date recaps, we are basically doing a new product recap in our weekly Goulet pen cast, which we have both on YouTube and in an audio podcast form. So if you like these kind of recaps and summaries of pens, uh, you can be sure to check that out as well. That's all I got for you this time. Thanks so much for watching and right on.